Hello and what is going on guys? I'm unsaintly and normally I wouldn't do a video like this, but right now... <sighs> I kind of feel like doing a quick, not too in-depth, Wrestlemania recap. I just watched it, I'm a big wrestling mark, if you haven't noticed. And... I must admit, Wrestlemania 30 was a pretty good event. Even though there was one big thing that I don't like at all, and if you've watched it, you already know what I'm talking about. I have a little list here on my monitor about the matches. I'm gonna glance over them real quick, talk about them real quick. And give you my opinion about the matches, and then I'm gonna go into a rant. A little rant. Mini, mini rant, mini rant. Uh, yeah, let's start. Tag Team Championship on the pre-show, Usos versus Matadors versus Rybaxel versus Real Americans. Was a pretty good match for a pre-show match that was acceptable. I mean, yeah, it was an okay match. I wouldn't say it was a bad match. I think uh, Real Americans eliminated Los Matadors and Rybaxel and then the Usos did a double splash from the top ropes, like if that's the ring. One did a splash here, the other one there, and they just splashed onto Cesaro and pinned them. And then they won, retained the titles. And after that, Swagger put Cesaro into the ankle lock, and Cesaro was not amused. Then Zeb kind of broke it up and said to Swagger that he should hug, or they should hug it out, pretty much. Which Cesaro, right now he's pretty much on a face, he's, he's already on a face turn thing, thing. He's already pretty facey, so yeah, he didn't take that, he did the Cesaro swing, I think. Yeah, he did that, and then he left and he was like, we the people, and he, he ran off. Zeb was pretty, pretty, uh, excuse me. Zeb was pretty pissed off, but what can you do? After that, uh, the list is kind of out of... Fuck, why is it out of whack? I don't know why it's out of whack. Then, right, then was the number one contenders match. I guess I have a better side to see that. Then was the number... or not the number one contenders match, but yeah, pretty much. The match between Brian and Triple H, who gets into the championship match at the end. Let me see the list. There we go, that's a better list. Uh, yep, it was Daniel Bri Daniel Bryan against uh, Triple H, and it was a was a pretty damn good match. I think the story that they told with the arm and the shoulder was pretty nice. The ring's psychology was, I I liked it. Steph was a little weird at times when she was yelling at Bryan, but I don't know. Overall, it was a pretty good match. I liked it. Bryan won, but after the match. Steph went into the ring, slapped Daniel Bryan around a little bit, and then Triple H clobbered uh, Bryan from behind. And then he beat him up pretty bad, gave him a nasty chair shot on the ring post where he just smacked the chair into his arm and the ring post. Pretty much like he did on Raw when he beat him down with the handcuffs. Pretty much the same spot, just with the arm. I would say that was a good match. After that, we had, where is it, Shield against the New Age Outlaws and Kane. I actually missed some of that because I went on a toilet break and they the Shield pretty much squashed them. Pretty cool spot was they did the powerbomb. They normally do the triple powerbomb where they powerbomb one guy, but then they powerbombed actually Billy Gunn and the Road Dog. That was a pretty cool spot. They, uh, Reigns had pretty much both of them. They put them on each arm pretty much. And then, yeah, that was a pretty good spot. I, I think that was uh, pretty nice. Good match, I guess. Uh, not really. Pretty much a squash. So it wasn't that interesting. After that, we had the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, I don't know. Some people were in there where I'm like, why? Like... If I look at that, Yoshi Tatsu, like, I'm a big NXT fan, and he had some matches on NXT where he got beat up by 
Stay Down, the guy. Forgot his name. I re I just recently started watching NXT, so I'm not that good on the names. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Kali eliminated three of them, and then at the end, pretty much, it was Cesaro against Big Show, which was pretty nice. And I was like, yeah, Cesaro, let's go with the people and all of that jazz. And he actually pulled it off. He actually did, like, the slam that Hogan did to Andre a little bit and actually threw him over the rope. Cesaro threw Big Show over the top rope. Which is crazy because that's a it was a crazy deadlift. He just picked him up and muscled him over the top rope. That guy is freakishly strong, dude. Pretty okay. I don't know. The Battle Royal f felt okay. I wouldn't say it was the craziest, though. But... I just forgot the opening segment, dude. I marked out like crazy. First of all, Hulk Hogan comes out. So I'm like, yeah, Hogan. Brr, brr, yeah, you're like, yeah, you know that stuff. Typical Hogan, brother. Funny thing is, they are in the Superdome, and he's like, Let me tell you something, brother. We are here in the Silver Dome, brother. And everyone's like, dude. We're in the Superdome. Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And he's like... Brother, the Silver Dome is the best ar arena in the world, brother. And everyone's like, dude, wrong arena. And then they actually chanted Super Dome, and he's like, oh. Yeah, we're in the Super Dome, brother. I know. The Hulkamaniacs just. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And then Austin comes out. Glass shatters. Austin comes out. He actually is like, oh, I'm gonna open a can of whoop ass. And who wants to see, uh,. Austin opened a can of whoop ass, give me a hell yeah, and he does the whole, I'm Austin shtick. And I'm like, yeah, Austin, cool, because you haven't seen Austin in a while. I think the last appearance was on WrestleMania 26, something like that. I'm not entirely sure. How long have I been doing this? Maybe I need to speed it up. No, it's okay. Okay, so after that, after Austin came out, if you somehow, the rock comes out, which was fairly cool, I mean... We've seen him a couple of times now, and I was... Still, man, dude, I was so hyped up. Like, that was a markout moment just right at the start where you have Hogan, you have Austin, and you have The Rock in one ring. Like, uh, it was it was a pretty marky moment for me. I, I was screaming like, little girl! Pretty good, but that I forgot that. I don't know why, but that was one of the best moments of WrestleMania for me. After that, we had... John Cena versus Bray Wyatt with the cool Eminem uh, video thing, video package, which I really like because Legacy is a pretty cool song from the Marshall Mathers LP too. So I really like that little video package. And yeah, the match itself was okay. Uh, Cena was always like, I'm getting really angry. Uh, the monster is coming out. Like, it's pretty much... A little bit like Kane versus Cena, where he was like, hate, blah, 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 and then the Rise of Buffet t shirt came out and shit. Eh, and then, funny, funnily enough, Cena attacked Rowan and Harper after. I don't know, it was weird that he attacked Rowan and Harper, and then he won clean, so. And then the funny thing is, Cole was like, Oh my god, it's Cena! He's sticking to hustle, loyalty, respect, because that's his mantra, that's his code, he lives by that, he's never going to be a monster. Before, he had, like five minutes before he attacked Rowan and Harper without them attacking him, and he speared Harper through the barricade and shit. And I'm like, eh, he's not that hustle, loyalty, respect, eh, just do that first. Fuck you, Cena. I don't know. Cena sucks. Kinda, if you would be... Uh, he's not interesting enough. But yeah, Cena wins. The match was okay. Funny enough, the the really cool segment was actually where Cena was going. He did the spinny thing and then he wanted to do the You Can See Me. And he actually runs into the rope and Bray Wyatt does this little spider thingy where he just stands up. That was pretty cool, man. And then the crowd chanted, This is creepy. Or You Are Creepy. I think this is creepy. Pretty good spot. Other things in that match were, were that 
they actually chanted the song of Bray Wyatt. You got the whole world in your hand. They did that, and like in the background, they were like, "Hey, ho!" It was pretty funny. I mean, Bray Wyatt is cool, but Cena won, which I don't, and he won clean, you know, after an F F U. Attitude adjustment. F U was. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't. It was an F U before, but Cena won clean. I don't know why. It's Cena. Whatever. Then we had the Hall of Fame stuff. Really good. If you haven't seen the speech of Jake the Snake, I actually teared up and cried a little bit. I didn't cry, but I teared up. Because it was so... It was pretty real. He was, like, talking about his past with his addiction problems to drugs and all of that. Lita's story was a little long, but I still found it pretty interesting. The Mr. T stuff was awkward because I mean yeah you're talking about your mother all the time and funny thing was he was talking about his mother how he appreciates his mother and all of that and then he was like I don't only love my mother on Mother's Day I love my mother on Father's Day now that was his punchline at the end <laughs> I totally fucked it up now but he was like I like my mother on Groundhog's Day what I like my mother on Christmas Day. What? And then the the crant uh, the the crant the crowd pretty much shat on that and it was pretty funny though. And actually, I didn't know if Mr. T meant all of that serious or if he was just like doing a little comedy segment as well. But he was talking about his mother and I don't know. Weird. He rambled on for a really long time and then Kane actually came out and was like, "Stop, dude. Thing is over, man. Stop it." was a little awkward as well. Then Kane inducted. I don't know. Watch the Hall of Fame thing. Razor Ramon, Chico. Actually, Razor Ramon, stay here for a second. I'm going to be right back. Razor Ramon is a good topic for something that I want to show you. Eh. I was talking about Razor, and I actually have... Let me see if I can... I have a fucking autograph. Fuck, how can I... Yeah, I have a fucking... It's a little... But I have an autograph of Scott fucking Hall, as you can see. To Renee, because my name's Renee. Not like Renee Young, because the female version is written with two E's. I don't have a female name. Google it. But yeah, I have a nice little Scott Hall. <sighs> I have a nice little Scott Hall autograph. I really love you, Scott. I actually pitched in for his Indiegogo to get him a hip surgery or something. And that's why I got this little autograph. Scott, you're the best. Hey, yo. <clears throat> okay, with that done, where was I? I met Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. <sighs> let, let me skip that for now, and I'm going to go to the main event, right? Oh, that was the Divas match, but I took a piss. Hmm. AJ won in the Widow's Triangle dude thing. I actually think AJ took the hand of... Did she do it on Naomi? I think so. He just I think she took her hand and made her tap because she was out. Out. It was pretty funny, but it's, it was a Divas match. Who gives a shit? I'm sorry, man. Divas matches are so boring. And then we had uh, the main event. Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton versus the Bootista and I don't know WWE books triple threats so boring that I'm like dude why are you even bothering making it a triple threat because what WWE always does with triple threat matches is they have three guys and from these three guys one guy gets knocked out or hurt or thrown into the steps and he's out like five minutes he's out he's just laying there uh, at the apron or so, or at the commentary uh, table and he's just out he's just done for like five minutes and then we, you have a normal match without like a normal no DQ match I guess. That's pretty boring, and they always do that, and I don't know why that is, but they do, and it was weird, man. Match was okay, they still worked the shoulder and the arm of Daniel. They had a pretty crazy spot where, in the match, actually, Scott Armstrong, first of all, 
the referee, the normal referee, was Mike Kyoto. And so at some point in the match, we actually had Triple H and Stephanie come out through the ring bell guy. They came through there, through the crowd, and went into the ring and distracted Daniel Bryan. And I think they punched him or something. I, I know they distracted him. Then they... Right. They, I think uh, Bryan was pinning... Either Orton or Batista, I don't really remember right now, even though it has been like 10 minutes or something since I s I've seen it, but... <laughs> he pinned him, and then Triple H pulled out Mike Kyoto. He was knocked out then. A triple typical ref bump spot. And after that, they actually brought out Scott Armstrong, the one who screwed Brian before. So he comes out... He, he does a normal pin. Batista gave Brian the Batista bomb. He does one, two. Oh, no. Kick out really close. It's only two. Two. No, Mike Kyoto does always that, right? Two. Whatever. And then Triple H is like, what the fuck? And Stephanie's actually like, huh? Count faster, man. It was really funny. And then Triple H got pissed. He wanted to go into the ring. Brian d did a suicide dive through the second rope. Hit... Armstrong, Steph, and Triple H. Steph was lying on the ground holding her ankle and stuff. And Triple H got mad, got the sledgehammer. Actually, before Brian kicked Scott Armstrong in the head. Because it's no DQ, he can kick him. Yeah. That was pretty funny. But Triple H gets the sledgehammer. Drops it somehow. Brian gets the sledgehammer, clobbers him. Before that, I think they did the crazy spot where Batista actually power bombed. They they were on the both on the announce tables like that. They were on the announce tables, and then Batista had Brian up. Was Batista bombing Brian through the table while Orton was coming from the other table? He had the steps in front of the table right here, like the steps in front of him, and he. Powerbombed him while Orton jumped over and RKO'd actually Brian while he was flying down from the powerbomb. And Orton landed really nasty on the monitor, dude. Ouch. He actually had a bloody back from that and stuff. Ugh, he really landed pretty nasty. But at the end, finishes. Uh, finisher there, RKO there. He tries to punt but didn't hit. Then the knee from Brian and... At the end, it was a knee against Batista, and then, yes, lock, he taps, yes, yes, yes. Pretty cool, not the best match, the crowd was really dead for a long time in the match. Because of the match that I'm talking about right now, I've been going for like 20 minutes now, but I don't give a shit. Actually, I thought in the main event, they would do the WrestleMania 9 stuff, and WrestleMania 9 is a good... Good little thing because I have something here as well for WrestleMania 9. Which is the WrestleMania 9 VHS, dude. What is that? An epic, an event of epic proportions, dude. That was, that event is so crazy. The entertainment event of the year. You can see the young Shawn, Shawn Michaels, Tatanka, Steiner Brothers, Alphonse. Is it Alphonse Sika? So, I'm so dumb. Head Shrinkers. It's like Rikishi, dude. I think that's Rikishi, right? It's Rikishi. I forgot. Head Shrinkers. I thought they might do that in the main event where Brian wins against uh, them and then Triple H is like, no, nah, like uh, Hogan did in the main event against Brad. Uh, Brad against Yokozuna and then Hogan came and said, Brad lost and then. Hogan was like, no, bro, that's not good. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers. I'm in the match. I'm the champion. Yeah, but original VHS, dude. Really old. WrestleMania 9. Still have it. It's pretty fucked up already, but... I mean... Yeah, original VHS. But yeah. The last match that I want to talk about. Where is my drink? Where is my drink? Ah, <sighs> Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Let me tell you, right from the start, I'm not a big Undertaker fan, right? So I'm not butthurt because I'm an Undertaker fan. I don't like Undertaker that much. But... First of all, the match was not good. 
Undertaker cannot wrestle anymore. He's too old. He has too many injuries that's that, that are plaguing him or something. He's horrible in the ring. He cannot work a match anymore. Especially not against Brock Lesnar. That match had nothing going for it. And then we had the typical oh finisher F5 kick out. Choke slam, kick out, last right from the turnbuckle, because Undertaker cannot lift anyone uh, in a standing last right, just lifting him up. There's no way Undertaker can do that anymore. Kick out, out of the, he had him on the turnbuckle, was pounding him like one, two, three, like the typical turnbuckle spot. And then, Taker t- just last right at him, he didn't even, he can't, he just... He's just fucked up, dude. But... Typical main event... Oh, not main event, but typical take a WrestleMania spammy finisher match. F5 kick out. I think he kicked out of two F5s. Hell's Gate two times while Lesnar muscles out and kind of mini power bombs him. Um, Kimura. Kimura gets countered into another Kimura. All of that stuff. And... Then the finish came, where Barack Lesnar, still don't, conquered the streak. Let that sink in for a while. Brock Lesnar ended the streak. They could have given the streak to CM Punk the year before. Would have made more sense. They could have given the streak to someone like Bray Wyatt or Cesaro or Ziggler <laughs> Ziggler he's a mid card he's in mid card hell he will never do anything but they could have given the streak to someone it's like giving the streak to the rock why the fuck would you give the streak to the rock or Brock Lesnar they are part Time wrestlers. Brock Lesnar is gone in like a year. At the latest. He's gone at... Or at the earliest. No, at the latest, right? Yeah, at the latest he's gone in a year. He has a contract with a clause in it that says... I only have like six appearances. uh, In half a year or in a year. Why do you give this streak to Brock Lesnar? I like the unpredictability of Lesnar or the streak being broken. I'm not for the streak being forever because that would be dumb. There's so much so much potential to boost new talent. Why boost Brock Lesnar? I don't I don't know why Like I said, I'm not an Undertaker fan by any stretch of the imagination, but Brock Lesnar It wasn't even a good story, man. It was like, I'm Brock Lesnar. I'm back. I want the title at WrestleMania. And then he was like, I'm the number self-proclaimed number one contender. Eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. All right. And then Taker's like, no, you're conquering nothing. I'm going to fuck you up. You want to go? Like, at the UFC event where Lesnar got beaten up and Mark, or Taker, is like, You wanna go, dude? You wanna do it now? (laughs) But yeah, I don't know, man. The build-up was so dumb and he rams the pen into his hand and... (sighs) I don't know, I've been rambling on for... Almost half an hour now. I needed to let this out. It's fucking, like, I'm just saying, man. 
Ah, oh, there is my where I live. I don't know. I don't want you guys to know where I live. Can I? Fucking shit! How can I show that? Uh, it's fucking 5 a.m. Can I show that somehow without showing where I live? There, 5 a.m. My Bleacher Report stuff is actually popping up as well. But yeah, it's 5 fucking a.m. 5.30 almost, and... I'm just shocked that Brock Lesnar got the streak. I don't know why. I don't know why Brock. Why? It was a pretty good WrestleMania overall. I liked most of the matches, but... The Brock thing... It's weird. I, it's not for me. I don't know why they did it. I would have wished that they would have had the fucking balls to give it to some up-and-coming superstar that deserves to get a big push. If you... Bray Wyatt, for example, if you put Bray Wyatt in a spot against The Undertaker in a really good storyline and he wins, you have you you establish a mega mag it's a mega heel at that point for years to come. And you squander that chance on a part time wrestler like Brock Lesnar. I don't know. I needed to get that off my chest. I think that's it. I, I I will not do wrestling stuff regularly though. But I needed to get that. Like I said, I needed to vent. It's <clears throat> the whole event was pretty cool. Like I said, they had cool backstage segments with Piper, Orndorff, Mr. T, and Hogan, where they're like, "Oh, get over it." Blah blah blah. It was pretty cool. But the Brock thing was fucked up. It killed the crowd for the main event for like half the match. The crowd was so not into it. The good thing was there are really funny shots. I don't know if I can find them here. But there were really funny shots of the audience. You should Google that. There's really funny stuff there where they like... I don't know. It was funny. Yeah. I think that's been it. Ah. <sighs> I'm interested in the Raw because tomorrow Raw could be crazy if Brock or Taker comes out. If Brock comes out, I think that's going to be nuts. But I think they will try to make the audience a little tired. Even though I don't know. I don't know what they are planning with Brock. I don't know. I don't know if that's just their angle or... I don't get it. They have to have a plan, right? It's WWE, so probably not, but... Please have, like, at least some sort of a plan, Vince. Please. I don't know, I'm... I'm. Like I said, I just wanted to get this off my chest, and... It was WrestleMania, good WrestleMania overall. Matches were pretty solid, some of them were really fucking good. Cesaro won the Battle Royal, which I'm really happy about. Because he's from Switzerland, which is close to Germany, so I'm rooting for him. He can speak German. <sighs> yeah, I might do another video on Raw if Raw is crazy or something. I don't know. Otherwise, that's been a wrestling vlog mini recap of... <sighs> I don't even know who watches this shit. I'm out, guys. Eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. Whatever, dude. I'm out. <laughs> Take care. Peace. <laughs>